Okay, let's get started with the recording. Anna, are we good? Yes. Great. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Astronomical Society of the Pacific's uh, story time at home. And we are reading today the book Mousetronaut by astronaut Mark Kelly and illustrated by C.F. Payne. There is a little mouse. This is, I really like these um, inside pictures. The pictures are really wonderful in this book. And the mouse is looking up at space. The shuttle is set for the launch and the astronauts are doing their last minute trainings to prepare for the mission. And there's also astro there's astronauts, but there's also engineers and doctors, all kinds of people who are in the ship getting ready for the mission. NASA is sending along some special gifts, guests, excuse me, for this flight and their training too. Some of them are using the pull-up bars and exercising. Some of them are doing solving puzzles. One mouse is smaller than the rest. His name is Meteor. The other mice know he won't be chosen for this important mission, but someone has his eye on Meteor and he's very impressed with the little mouse's hard work. Do sometimes people say you can't do things because you're small? That is can be tough. The shuttle commander announces that six mice will be selected for the flight. He picks five of the biggest, strongest mice. But for the sixth spot, to everyone's surprise, he chooses Meteor. All six are taken to their new home, a special cage called the Mouse Hotel. The other mice are nervous as the countdown begins, but not Meteor. Look at his smiling face, he's so excited. Let's count down together, ready? 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off, or lift off as they say. And there is the space shuttle blasting into the sky. At first, the mice are pressed against their flat against their cage by the power of the launch, but then the pressures go to away. The other mice cling to their cage in terror, but not Meteor. He loves the feeling of weightlessness. Hey, little guy, the commander says, you're a natural, a real live mousetronaut. Meteor is taken from a his cage and he gets a tour of the shuttle. He can even see the earth way off in the distance. The astronauts are all very busy during the 14 day flight. There are spacewalks to take and experiments to conduct, but what can Meteor do to help? Then while answering email, one of the astronauts notices that the key to the control panel is stuck between the monitors. When he tries to get it out, it actually gets wedged further down. This isn't good, says the commander. We need that key back. One astronaut tries to move the monitor, but it doesn't budge. Another slips her fingers down into the crack, but the key is stuck down too deep. One even tries pushing it out with a long piece of metal, but with no luck. No one could reach it. How are they gonna get the key? The astronauts are getting worried, but as they discuss the problem, a tiny figure has an idea. Being the smallest isn't a bad thing, Meteor says to himself. Maybe I can be useful on this flight. 
Meteor squeezes his way into the crack. The space is dark and cramped, but Meteor spots the key and he tugs at it with all his might. Hey, look what our tiny friend has done, the commander saved. Says he saved the mission. When the shuttle returns to Earth, Meteor is declared a hero. He's even given a brand new uniform and official title, Maustronaut. All the astronauts cheer and applaud, but Meteor is busy thinking about his next big mission. And that is the end of our storybook with Meteor looking so pleased with himself and excited about the future in space. And so now we're gonna turn it over to Anna who can, is gonna show us a space activity that we are gonna do. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um... Teresa, could you maybe help me? I'm trying to spotlight my own video and I, I am know. I just did that. Oh, great. Thanks. Hey, okay. So that was a really fun book. Thank you, Teresa. Um, that Maustronaut. Um, um this and oh, did someone have a question? Uh -huh. Uh what are you gonna make? We're going to make, that's a really great question. We are going to make some balloon rockets. So remember the part in the book where we- Balloon rockets. Oh, let's go back to the materials, Teresa, please. Sorry. Oh, that's OK. So um, remember the part in the book where there was a, a blast off? Um, we counted down and then blasted off, and the rocket launched into space. So we're going to make some balloon rockets to launch into, not into space, but maybe across your living room. Um, and you need some materials. We said this in the email, but I'll just go over them again. I'm going to mute everyone again. There we go. So um, I'll, you'll have a chance to talk and ask questions after I give the instructions. So um, the materials you'll need is a balloon, um, and I have some balloons here, <laughs> um, and a paper or plastic drinking straw, and these are some old ones that I had in my cupboard, thankfully, um, some scissors, and um, you probably, if you're, if you're learning how to use scissors, make sure you have scissors that are made for kids or that you have a grown-up to help you use the scissors, some string, and some tape. And then optionally, you could have some paper um, if you want to add some fins and things to your rocket. But we won't do that for the first part. Um, so those are the materials you need. And um, next up, we want to watch just watch a little video of a rocket launching um, up into space. So Teresa, could you play that video, please? And as the video plays, I want you to look at like the fire that you see and notice which way is that fire going. So let's watch and what, which way is the fire coming out of the rocket. There are the people in the control room watching the launch. There it goes. It's, it's about to launch. It's playing real slow for me, Teresa. I don't know. Oh, there we go. So do you see that fire coming out of the rocket? Which way is that going? I see it shooting down out of the rocket, pointing down. And that's a lot of force going down. And so that's making the rocket go up in the opposite direction really fast. So that's how rockets work. Um, it's okay, Teresa, we don't have to, it, it's okay. Um, All right, well, I'm just getting the slides back together. Oh, great, um, we thanks. don't need to watch the whole movie um, and we can even um, share that another time. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, how about I take off the slides? 
Yeah, that, that sounds good. Hey, uh... So did you see that fire shooting out of the bottom of the rocket? Yeah, um, I have a question. Okay, what's your question? We don't have balloons. Okay, well, you can watch how we do this. And then if you get some balloons sometime, you could try this out, okay? Well, we, we well, won't spend too long on it. Um, okay, so, um, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, we, try to, we try to pick stuff where we, you might have it around the house. I didn't have any balloons either. So I ended up having to go buy some balloons yesterday so I could do this activity with you. Um, so what we're gonna do, I actually have uh, set up a chair across the room. You get to see my living room a little bit. Um, so there's a chair over there and I have a chair here also. And I'm, I, I have, I already actually tied some string to this chair and I'm going to, when it's time, I'm gonna stretch it over to this chair and tie it here. But first, before we tie this end of the string, we're gonna blow up our balloon. Pick the green one because it's my favorite color. And I'm not going to tie it. You know how sometimes you tie the balloon so the air won't come out? I'm just going to keep it pinched with my fingers. And then I'm going to take a straw. Oh, and I should have done this before, but I can hold a lot of things with my fingers. I'm going to cut a shorter piece of this straw. Um, I'm going to cut it like in half. So now I have a piece of the straw. And you might want to have a grown-up help you so someone can hold the balloon and someone else can tape it. Um, I'm going to take a piece of tape. Oh, Anna, you have very good skills. <laughs> I, I should have done some of this ahead of time. And I'm, I'm still holding the balloon shut. I'm going to tape that straw. <laughs> Ada says I have mad skills. <laughs> so I taped the straw to the inflated balloon. And now I'm going to take that string that I tied to the chair over here. I, I can't, we're still trying to do it. Okay, that's it's okay. okay. You I, don't have to do it at the same time. You can also watch Anna and do yeah, it afterwards. In fact, I want to, I want you all to watch me because I want you to help me because we're going to predict what's going to happen. So what oh. I'm doing now is I'm taking the string and, and I, I practice this. So I've, I've had some practice, so it might take a few tries to do this. I'm going to stick the string through the straw. So now I have a balloon with a straw taped to it and the string going through it. And I'm going to tie, whoops, my straw came off, that's okay. I'm gonna tie the um, string to this chair. I have too much stuff going on here. I'm tying and holding the balloon shut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of pieces to, to consider in this one, but it's a really fun so, activity. Yeah, so I have a, the string going from this chair to this chair, and it's pretty taut. It's not like drooping, and the straw is on it, and I have my inflated balloon. And you know what? If you do this, you might think of a better order to do these steps in. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and yeah. which way do you think that she should put the balloon? Remember the way the rocket was coming, the fuel, the fire and smoke was coming out of the rocket and steam. So I'm just, just gotta get this straw taped on here so it'll stay on. Go this way. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We've got the straw taped to the balloon and I'm gonna bring it over here. And what do you think is going to happen if I let go and let the air come out of the balloon? Which way is the air going to go? It's going to go back behind me, right? And which way do you think the balloon is going to go? Let's find out. 
Whoa! It came off the straw and it flew all the way to the computer here for you to see me. <laughs> and so someone thought it might go up. Why didn't it go up? Well, it was attached to the straw and the string, right? So um, it didn't go up. It went along the string. And I know it's hard to see. It's hard to see that string there, but there's a piece of string tied here. So you could try this. Maybe some of you want to try it now. I'll do it again so you can watch me do it again. Um, and there's some different things you could try. So you could um, put more, more air in it. Like I could put just one big breath of air or I could put three big breaths of air. What difference do you think it'll make if there's more or less air? Something else you could do is you could attach, you could use your paper and you could cut out like some fins, like maybe like a triangle of paper and tape a few of them on your balloon. Do you think that would make any difference? So different things to try and experiment with and see what happens. Um, so I'm gonna show you again how to do that because you know sometimes it takes seeing things a couple times to do it. So I'm gonna do it again. And then when we're done, we'll turn off the recording and we can get questions and shares and things like that. Okay? Sounds good. So I'm gonna talk it through again. So I have two chairs. There's one on this side of the room and one on this side of the room. And I have a piece of string tied between them. It's kind of thin, so it's a little bit hard to see it, but it's it's tied in between it and it's pretty tight. It's not drooping. In fact, I'm even gonna move this chair so it's nice and tight. And on that string, I have a piece of a drinking straw. It could be a plastic straw or a paper straw. And I'll show you, I have another, I have another straw here. And what I did is I just, I took my scissors and I cut that straw in half to have a piece of a straw. And I put it on the string before I tied it to the chair, right? So here's the string with a piece of a straw on it. See, I can slide we it. can see the straw, but not the string so much, but I can see when you're moving it along the string yeah. that the string is there. I've got, it's, it's kind of thin string. Here, I'll hold up the spool of it for you so you can see. And you can use any kind of thickness of string that will fit the, in the straw. As long as it'll fit in the straw and you probably don't want it to, if it's if it's thick and rough, it could slow things down. But that's another variable. A thing you could change is like, does it matter if you use different kinds of string, how fast it goes, how far it goes? I'm just so going to say we're going to do questions at the end because everybody so everybody can see what we're doing and then we will um, stop the recording and do questions and answers in just a minute. Yeah, so Thanks now I'm going patience. to blow up my balloon. I think I'll do three big breaths into this balloon, ready? One big breath, two big breaths, three big breaths. Wow, that is a lot. And yeah, so this is a, now a big balloon with a lot of air in it. And when I let go, the air is, if I pull it like this, if I let go, the air is going to go out that way, right? Yeah. There's, there's pressure on the balloon from all sides and it's going to push it out that way. And if I let go right now, if the air went out that way, which way would the balloon go? It'd go this way, the opposite. Just like with the rocket, when the fire went out one way down, the rocket went the other way up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm pinching this closed. And you know something, you could use a clothespin to hold it closed or like a, a binder clip if that helps. Or if you have a nearby grown up, you could have them hold it for you. And you'll also, you're gonna need a piece of tape. I have the piece of tape here that I used last time. And without tying the balloon shut, you're gonna use that tape to tape the straw to the balloon. Are you guys ready to see it again? Oops, there you go. Now, now she's taping the straw to the balloon that, and then. All right. 
we'll launch it one more time and then we will answer the questions. Now this one has three big breaths. So okay. do you think it'll go farther or about the same? Take a guess and then wanna there count we go. Down? 10, 9, 8, 7, <laughs> 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. <laughs> It stuck to it this time and it didn't go quite as far, but I think it went faster. I think it went faster too. And you could try a longer string because this one went all the way along the string. If you have more space where you can spread it out, maybe even like if you have a, a backyard, you could try it there or if you have a big room. So all kinds of things. You can try different lengths of string, different kinds of string, different amounts of air in the balloon. What if you put fins on the balloon? All kinds of things to try. So um, Teresa, could you put up the slide about what we're doing next time? We'll show that and then we'll stop the recording and we'll take questions and um, you can tell us about the balloon rockets maybe you've been making while I did mine. Um, but Hold first on, I want to just one you. second and yeah. I'm going to put that up for us. Teresa's getting that up. We're going to tell you what what book we're going to read next month. And because um, we we know some of you come and join our story time every month. <laughs> the next okay. one. Is, but not every day. Not every day. <laughs> not every day. <laughs> I wish that's I could, a lot of Zoom for people yeah, to do every day. Yeah, that's a lot to be on camera. I. And you know, I have I not have every week too. Um, and we were doing it every week for a while. Some of you were here way back when we were doing it every week, but we started doing it just every month. <coughs> okay. You, so, so there we go. Um, yep. So next month we will be reading the book called Ron's Big Mission by Rose Blue and Corinne Nadden and illustrated by Don Tate. And that's on Tuesday, February 20th, 23rd um, at the same time. Tuesday 23rd? Yeah, yeah. Am. and you can find more information um, soon. It's not up there yet, but um, you'll find more information at astrosociety.org slash storytime. And you're also always welcome to email us at storytime at astrosociety.org. So if you have any photos of the activities that you've been doing that you want to share or any questions for us. So we hope to see you next time. And now I'm going to stop the recording. And you can ask questions. They didn't use the tape.